I talk with a lot of young entrepreneurs, sometimes not so young, who seem to be perpetually looking for that next step. They are looking so intently that they are completely forgetting about doing the small, little, and simple things that bring about the next step. And furthermore, that continued hunt for the next completely overrides the joy of the now, what they're living in at the moment. So there's two things I'd like to unpack here. Number one, don't set aside the simple things because you are looking for the bigger things. The simple steps always lead to more. And number two, find what you love to do and do it right now. There's a lot of joy in doing what you love. There's a lot of fulfillment in doing things that bring you joy. It's not about the next step. Your life is about doing everything you can right here and right now. So if you follow Whole Fest Gear on Instagram, then you know that on Sundays, we like to post a challenging or encouraging post, something not related to the photo industry as a whole, just something to challenge you to get you going. This came from a post that we did on June 2nd. So it's just at Holdfast Gear on Instagram. I hear this a lot from people that have businesses or are wanting to start a business or they're trying to grow their business. They're kind of always on this perpetual hunt looking for something new. And I feel like they're getting lost in that hunt for something new that they're forgetting about doing what they can in the here and now. So that's what this post is about. And I think it applies to not just people that are entrepreneurial, but I think it applies to, to everyday life anyway. When you're always looking for that next thing or that special thing, you're forgetting all the little stuff that you need to do, all the great stuff, all the fun things in life that you could be doing right now that get you to that next step. So you're instead of, instead of always searching for something new, like roll it back some, let's take a look at what I'm doing day to day, and let's do the right things now, like the next closest right decision, and work on the little things, and as you do those things, more doors open up for you, uh, your, your, your vision gets a little bit more clear. A lot of things happen and a lot, of, a lot of things line up once you start doing the small things. So one thing that I like to say, if you're constantly living for that next step, you're gonna miss the doors that are open right in front of you. Sometimes there's, there's answers for you, there's doors open, there's easy pathways that you can take that's right in front of you, but you're completely missing it because you're constantly searching and you're constantly overlooking the, the close right thing for the next big thing. And that's what I wanna say. I, I, I always hate that search for the next big thing, what's my next big hit? Or like if you if you make products, you make one that hits and one that's really great, and then you are forgetting little small simple things that you can make because you're looking for, oh, what's that next big thing I can do? Um, or sometimes if you're just in that creative process and you're wanting to make a great image or a great painting or a great drawing, you're kind of, sometimes you're, you're hampering yourself by not just doing the small fun sketches. And that's kind of what I do when I'm designing products. Sometimes I just open up my notebook and just do a bunch of silly sketches that eventually one hits. I'm like, oh yeah, now that's that's the right idea. It wasn't like I was hunting for the next big thing. I was just doing a lot of fun things in life and it brings about that next thing. I, I sort of think about this journey in, in the sense of building a house. You first have to find the property, the land that you love. I mean, if you want to build your own house, not just buy one that's already built, but if you want to build your own, you first have to start with the property. Where do I want to live? What do I want the property to be like? Do I want it to be by a river or a lake? Or do I want an open open field? Do I want to be in the woods? You first got to start with your property, right? You got to find that, that property first. You probably need to come up with blueprints and designs. And then you got to clear out the, then you got to figure out where that blueprint's going to fit on your property. And then you got to clear out the land. So there's a lot of steps before you just, bam, have a house. And I, I think that happens a lot. We're dreaming about the big house without rolling back and let's start first. Let's find where I want that house to go. Let's see where that fits on the property. Let's get the blueprints. So many times I see young people doing that. They're they're in college or they're, they're graduating college and they're thinking, well, okay, my career, I need these big things. I gotta, I gotta find the right job. I gotta make all this money to pay off my student loans or whatever. So they're looking at the big picture as opposed to, let's, let's dial it back first. Let's start small. Let's start looking at what can I do right now to get going. And it, that's what all of life is about. That's what all of business is about. That's what all of your career is about, is just finding that start point, getting started. Once you get started, a lot of other things happen. And you might not even get started in something that you love to do. It's just a matter of getting started and getting that ball rolling when you're on that search and on that hunt for what you love to do. Back when I started Hold Fast Gear, I was doing design work and video production work during the week. I was shooting weddings every single weekend. I had a three-year-old and a newborn. Life was very full and life was very busy. But then I found my passion. I found what this, this Hold Fast Gear, this business, I didn't even know what it was in the very beginning. I just had an idea for a camera strap and I knew that I had to chase it down. So I started chasing it down. When you step, step back and look, where, where I'm at now in business, I can't even imagine. I can't even believe it, that it's gotten so far. Uh, and it really isn't that far, but just that, that we're here is, is kind of blows my mind. But back then it was all, it was just about, let me just 
let me figure out how to get this camera strap done. I made one camera strap and then it, I just kept doing the small little things in all the cracks of time that I had. I'd do my work during the, during the day and then at night I'd put the, the kids in bed and then my wife and I would sit and we'd work on hold fast gear. And we'd stay up sometimes through the night working on stuff. I remember there was times where once we got rolling like in the late 2011 when we actually started making orders and, and shipping things out, we'd put the kids in bed. My wife and I had to clear out the living room floor because I didn't have a workshop. I, had a, I was using my dining room table to build stuff on and then we would clear out the living room floor and her and I would sit on our hands and knees and do boxes and lay out orders and lay out labels and put things in boxes and we'd do this for hours at night. And I look back on that and I think of, of how much fun we had. Now that worked for a while and then at, over time we grew and changed but I look back on that and think of how fun that was. I don't think about how much time we put into it, how much no sleep that I had because it wasn't about that. It was about I found my passion and I was going after it and we were doing all the little things. We were doing all the little steps. Back then, if, if I would have seen this back then, I thought, man, it's just too big. I can't get there. That mountain looks too big for me to climb. But we started small. We just started taking little steps. So first it came, I had an idea for a camera strap. So I had to start figuring out how am I gonna manufacture, how am I gonna build the camera strap? So I started building. And then I had to come up with, then it was like, okay, I'll come up with a name for the business. Let me start working on a site. So we did all these little things without getting ahead of ourselves. It was just little step after little step after little step. It led to another idea, led to another idea, led to another idea. Back then it wasn't like we were looking for these big ideas. We were just, I just found something that I love to do and I just kept doing it, kept chipping away at it. And eventually it just took off. And it wasn't about finding those big ideas and or waiting for big things to happen and all the stars to align. It was just, we just started working at it. And that's all it is. That's all business and entrepreneurship and having your own career. All that is, is just start working at it. And things happen. Once you start taking these little steps, you clear your, once you find your property, you clear your property, you get your blueprints, you write it down, you make it plain. You start doing these little steps. What happens is that leads to the bigger steps. It leads to the next thing because you're doing the small little things in between. So again, that point number one is don't wait for the big things. Don't wait for a chunk of money to come in. Don't wait for the right idea to come in. Just start with the little things. Start with the small things. Make the, the what I always say to people is make the nearest, closest, right decision that you can make. And I mean, it doesn't matter how small that decision is. Let me make that little step because what happens is those steps always lead to more. So the whole idea is don't get caught in the big. Start doing the now. Live here and now. Live in in this moment. Figure out what I can do right this second, and then. And then that's how you keep going. And then point number two is just find what you love to do and do that. Now I get it, we have responsibilities in life. We have our we have our things that we have to do to take care of bills or whatever. I get that, I'm not saying don't do those things. What I'm saying is be on that hunt to find what you love and then, and then start working towards that thing that you love and start giving everything you've got to it. All your creativity, all your energy in those free moments, you start working towards that. You don't think, oh, I don't have enough time for this. I promise you, you have enough time. You have enough time. It just is a matter of, do you have the discipline or the will or the desire or the passion for that thing? So maybe you haven't found what you're passionate about. That's why you don't have enough time. But once you find something you love to do, I promise you, time happens. You'll make the time for it. And what'll happen is it just starts leading you to that next step. And then you can start pulling away from things that you do that you don't love and you can start putting a little bit more into things you love. And it just works in this pendulum and it finally swings your way. So find what you love to do and do it right here, right now. Do it this very second. If you know that you love something and you're not doing it, you're wasting your life. You gotta get in there and start doing it right now. Whether it's 10 minutes at night before you go to bed, uh, leading to all the weekends that you have free time, that you start doing that. In the end, you really don't look back on missed time with, with, your, with going out and hanging out late at night. or didn't see the movies that you want to see. When you look back on, you think, man, I'm really glad that I did that thing back then. You aren't gonna think, man, I, I, I'm glad I went to dinner that night with my friends and partied. That, those, aren't, those things you don't remember 10 years down the road. What you do remember is the effort that you put in way back when and how it pays off in the now. Once you find that thing that you love, you start doing it this very second. Look, I'm no, I'm no one special. I mean, I, I couldn't even read in the first grade. I had to redo first grade because I couldn't read. All through my elementary school, I could barely pass my grades. So it isn't like I, I, I was smart or was special at anything. I was I played basketball and sports and I played football. I played tackle football until it became evident that I was too small. I'm 5'8", 100. In high school, I was like, actually in high school, I was like, I was like 5'6", and like 110 pounds. So once I realized that, man, I'm getting clobbered in football, I just went straight to basketball. And I possessed no athletic ability to, to succeed in basketball. So I don't, it's not like, um, Hold fast gears because of anything I did special. I don't have anything special. It was just a matter of I found what I love to do and I went after it. And that's what happens when you find what you love to do and you start doing it at that moment, life begins to make sense for you. Those next big steps 
they, they come into vision and you start realizing what you need to do as you start doing what you love to do. And it all just sort of like, it's like a domino effect. Once you hit that first one, it just goes down. And then next thing you know, you've gone down this huge, awesome design of dominoes that fell down. You're like, man, that's beautiful. But you didn't see the picture way back here. You just had to get started way back here to, for that picture to make itself. And that's where I'm at with Old Fast Gear. It's not like when I started this company, I had an idea for a camera strap, one camera strap, that was it. And it wasn't even a great camera strap. I didn't even sell a ton of them. But once I got started on that one, it led to more ideas. It opened the door to more ideas and, and more things started happening. So I just got started. And that's really the only thing that's special that happened was I found what I love to do and then I just got started. Some people like to step back and they look at themselves and think, man, I'm not, I'm not charming or I'm not good looking or I'm not athletic. They, they try to look at these special skills they see on someone else, apply it to themselves and think, man, that's not me. Of course that's not you. You're not that person. You have something on the inside of you that everyone else needs. So it comes down to you taking the effort and the time to find what you love and then that stuff that you have on the inside of you, it comes out and people will get blessed by it. Once you crack that thing, man, everything changes and everything happens. And it's like the, the stars align, but it, they don't align first. They align after you get started. And so that's what I, I just want to want you guys to get across. It isn't um, starting a business isn't necessarily something special or being successful isn't because of special traits that people have. It comes down to you just being what you want to be. This really is all very simple. Do what you love to do. When you're doing something that you absolutely love to do, you move every mountain to do that thing that you love. Effort doesn't matter because you're doing it. Time doesn't matter because you're doing it. Once you find what you love to do, effort goes out the window. Work, it's not hard work anymore. You're not thinking about, boy, I've just gotta work really hard. Yeah, I've worked a lot of hours and, and had a lot of sleepless nights. And for three years of my life, when I was doing uh, wedding photography and trying to run hold fast gear, I developed a permanent eye twitch for three years. My eye was twitching because I didn't get any sleep. But I don't remember not sleeping. What I remember is, man, I found what I love to do. And that's what invigorated me and gave me a lot of joy. So you need to find the stuff that gives you joy and do that every single day. You can do this. Do it. Grab it. Find it. You can do it.